CAC. Now, from Western North Carolina's News Leader, this is News 13 at 6. Unsecured guns. A mother is on trial here in McDowell County for a teenager who killed himself with a gun in her home and a single bullet. What witnesses say the chain of events were that led to his death. We're getting one step closer to learning where millions of dollars in COVID relief funding could be going in the city of Asheville. Who's on the list of the city's recommended recipients? A young boy visiting the mountains is rescued after spending the night lost in the woods. The effort to reunite him with his family. Plus the race for Asheville mayor. Tonight, the candidates debate as the primary election enters the home stretch. How you can watch it. A Marion woman is on trial for involuntary manslaughter after a 16 year old boy shot himself with an unsecured gun in her home. Kimberly Cable is also charged with a misdemeanor failure to secure a firearm. Her husband faces the same charges, but he goes on trial this summer. News 13's Kimberly King reports from the McDowell County Courthouse with what's unfolded in the case so far. The prosecution submitted photos inside the Cable's home that showed dozens of guns. Many, they said, were loaded along with ammunition found inside the home. Their focus is to present a picture of a couple that had no regard for the safety of children inside the house. Defendant Kimberly Cable sat with her attorney, Anthony Moreau, who believes the charges she faces for the death of 16 year old Kylie in 2018 are ones he can challenge based on law. Prosecutors submitted photos of the cache of guns inside the home. This unlocked safe, an investigator said, was full of ammo and numerous rifles. A diagram showed guns throughout the home. The victim, Lee, was staying at the house when Cable's son showed him a 44 Magnum he said one day would be his. Investigators reported the teens were handling the gun when a friend on FaceTime heard a conversation with the gun in the victim's hands. I wasn't paying attention to what he was doing. I just knew there was a gun in the room and I had heard a question be asked like something about Russian roulette and the next thing I know I hear a very loud bang and it didn't sound like a gunshot. Sheriff's Detective Van Williams presented photos showing the scene where Kyle Lee died as witnesses report he was heard talking about playing Russian roulette. Williams testified to many guns through the home without safety locks. If you pull the trigger, this gun would have fired. Murrow is arguing his client didn't load the gun with a bullet and that that clears her of the charges, but advocates say that's not the case. You know, it's a very serious issue. The research has proven that kids will find guns. Becky Surtas, director of North Carolinians Against Gun Violence, knows guns have now become the leading cause of death for children, surpassing car wrecks. She feels more felony prosecutions like this case should happen. We know that we cannot bring their loved one back. And we do hope that something like this, that this can set a precedent so that no other family has to undergo the anguish that that family is currently facing. Trial proceedings ended early today with the defense attorney having to be in another county for another case. We're told that court will resume tomorrow with testimony at 930 and wrap tomorrow with a potential deliberation by the judge and a verdict. Reporting from outside the McDowell County Courthouse, Kimberly King, News 13. We'll be talking more about this trial tonight on Primetime with Holly Hedrick. Be sure to join me live on the WLOS Facebook page starting at 845 and I'll let you know what we're working on for 10 and 11. A security threat forced two mountain schools into lockdown today. Yancey County school officials say officers were called to Blue Ridge Elementary School to investigate a report of a person with a weapon on campus. Cane River Middle School was also placed on lockdown. Officers searched the school, but they say they didn't find any signs of an intruder. Fire seriously damages a home in Nashville's historic Montford area. Crews were first called to the scene just before midnight. You can see flames tearing through that house in the video from a News 13 viewer. Fire officials say when they arrived, the fire had already done significant damage. They say crews worked hard to keep it from spreading to neighboring houses. Officials say the home was vacant and no injuries were reported. A Cannon family is in need of help after a weekend fire destroyed their home. Monica Marler tells News 13 the blaze started early Sunday morning at her home on Girdwood Height. Marler and her three children, ages 5, 10, and 11, all made it out safely, but they escaped with only the clothes they were wearing. The flames were higher than the trees, more than three or four hundred feet high. 
There was nothing left in my house. I couldn't find my animals anywhere. I don't know what to do. I lost everything. There is a GoFundMe account to help the family. Donations can also be dropped off at the Waynesville Walmart. An eight-year-old boy who's visiting the mountains from Florida was rescued early this morning after getting lost. Emergency officials in McDowell County say his name is Tobias Lucky, but he goes by Toby. He got separated from his family. They were walking on a trail in a private development called Catawba Falls Preserve. Officials say he was found in good condition around 8 this morning after spending the night in the woods. He did uh, lay down at some point under a bush and spend the night essentially in the woods. This is extremely rugged terrain in western McDowell County. This is west of, of the Catawba Falls and, and near the Buncombe County line. The overnight search involved a number of drones and other aircraft, as well as canine units and a large ground search. More than $64 million was requested from national organizations from American Rescue Plan Act funding. And today, the City Council held a work session to discuss those requests. News 13's Anjali Patel shows us who's on the short list to potentially get money and who's not. Beloved Asheville applied for some of the city of Asheville's COVID relief funding for an affordable housing project called Beloved Village. They're one of 71 organizations vying for money. Today's city staff revealed a list of 17 recommended funding requests that they say have passed the vetting process to get American Rescue Plan Act funds. On that list was Greenbelt Alliance requesting money for clean energy upgrades for low income housing. But not on that list was Beloved Asheville, who applied for money to help build and replicate its affordable tiny home project called Beloved Village. It just goes to show that the city values sustainability, supporting affordable housing and the environment. And so being able to channel some of this, this, these federal funds toward this effort to support the families that might need it the most is, is really encouraging. We were certainly um, hoping to be on that list because we are really passionate about this project and we know that this is a need. City staff said it's been a complicated process evaluating the applications because federal rules for how to spend the money have been amended as recently as the beginning of this month. The list of the 17 recommended applications is not set in stone. There's still a little over $2 million left in the pot to allocate. And on Monday, City Council did decide to explore some possible adjustments to that list, like increasing funding for Helpmates Domestic Violence Shelter proposal and adding Pisca Legal Services to that list to help with housing and evictions. Now, City Council is looking at the possibility of voting on some of those funding allocations at their May 10th meeting. Reporting in Asheville, Anjali Patel, News 13. Changes in leadership are coming to Asheville City Schools. Coming up, what one group of educators wants to see happen now instead of later. I don't know what this next 210 mile an hour curveball is going to be thrown at us by these variants. New COVID infections are rising again, where it's happening and the impact it's having on college campuses. And today was the warmest day of the year officially here in Asheville, hitting 80 degrees at the airport. That was eight degrees above average for the date, and we've had quite the run recently of some warmer than average numbers. Now the temperatures are cooling a little bit, but still mild this evening in the 60s throughout. We'll be in the 50s by morning, but rain's going to cool us down even more. I'll show you where and when. Fred Anderson Nissan's perfect timing event is your best time to save on Nissan's exciting new lineup. All new Nissan models, all with a family plan. Get 0 point on APR on 13 Nissan models. Fred Anderson Nissan. On Brevard Road. My one semi-goal that I always thought I could do was if I did well enough to take care of the employees and make it a good place to work, that the employees would help me take care of the company. By now, you know Ted Budd is weak on Putin. So is Joe Biden. Biden is backed by George Soros, and so is Ted Budd. That's right. Soros was the largest financial backer of Bud's business. Bud's business then ripped off farmers, got sued for fraud, and lost. Now Ted Bud's lying to you about Pat McCrory just to win an election. Just like Joe Biden. I'm Pat McCrory. I approve this message because you deserve the truth. Lake Point Landing, a non-endowment senior living community. Call today for a tour.
It's Hamrick's two-day senior event. Seniors take an extra 15% off, including wow items. Americana and garden decor, 50% off. Hummingbird feeders, just $8. Vila and Avia Athletics, $20. My Pillow, standard size, $19.98. Playtex bras, $14.99. And Southern Gal Tees, just $8. Hamrick's two-day senior event. Seniors take an extra 15% off, including wow items. Certified selection, certified savings, certified value. At Fred Anderson Nissan, buy certified Nissans with 1.9 APR, plus one-year complimentary maintenance. Fred Anderson Nissan. On Brevard Road. The worst of the pandemic may be behind us, but more than half of the country is seeing an increase in new COVID cases. Hospitalizations are also back up. As Rena Roy reports, it's all happening just days after a judge struck down the federal mask mandate. Coast to coast, some schools bringing back mask mandates once again, including American University. I would say kind of a comforting feeling that they were back, but almost like a too little too late since our cases had already spiked. Cases doubling over the last month in Washington, D.C. There's a lot of partying that goes on and bar hopping and, you know, just socializing amongst peers. In Houston at Rice University, face coverings now required in classrooms and large parties have been canceled on campus. Over the last week, new infections up about 10% or more in at least 38 states and territories. Hospital admissions also rising nearly 10% across the country. New variants largely to blame. We have to just say with humility and honesty, I don't know what this next 210 mile an hour curveball is going to be thrown at us by these variants. This just days after a federal judge struck down the travel mask mandate. I just believe that it's too early to be taking away uh, a small thing that helps prevent uh, illness and death in so many people like a piece of cloth across your face. Still, the best protection is getting vaccinated and boosted. More than 100 million Americans have gotten their first booster shots, but still about half of those eligible have not. The FDA now approving the use of the drug remdesivir for babies as young as 28 days old, weighing at least seven pounds. It's the same drug that was given to former President Trump when he got sick with the virus, and it's the first to be approved for children under 12. On Tuesday, the Biden administration will announce a plan to increase access to Pfizer's antiviral COVID pill. That includes distributing it to more pharmacies and educating providers on the pill so that more people can get their hands on it. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Our schools can't wait until November. The, the crisis that we see brewing isn't in November or past November. It's in May and it's in August. Asheville Association of Educators calls for change. A closer look at upcoming leadership changes in Asheville City Schools. Plus, Asheville's candidates for mayor are scheduled to debate how you can watch it and who's challenging Esther Mannheimer in the primary. And there it is today, officially 80 degrees, the warmest day of the year so far in Asheville. It took 192 days since we've had our last 80 degree high or warmer. Got to go back to October 15th last year. And now a cool down on the way. I'll show you when rain is going to do that and how long that cool air sticks around. Now, during Carolina Furniture Concept Employee Pricing Event, you pay what we pay, not one penny more. Recliners, $4.99. Sofas, $4.99. Queen beds, $3.99. Queen mattress sets, $3.99. At Carolina Furniture Concept in Arden and Waynesville. Sale ends soon. Hey folks, Richard Blake here with Auto Advantage. If you're wanting to upgrade your vehicle, now is the time. Come check out our huge selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs, and our state-of-the-art financing options. We have dozens of different banks that want to compete for your business. Go to myautoadvantage.com right now and click on the finance tab. Fill out your online application, get pre-approved instantly. It's that simple and takes less than five minutes. Auto Advantage, where relationships and your financing needs matter. Prescription pad pharmacies are more than just your average pharmacy. We know that life is busy, which is why our mission is to keep wait times at a minimum and answer the phone when you call. We accept most major insurance plans and we have a cash plan for medications which can help save money even without insurance. We offer a wide range of vaccines and testing options and our new convenient pill packaging system assures you'll never miss a medication. Come experience the prescription pad difference. I'm Matthew Burrell. 
and I approve this message. With prices this high, it's hard to make ends meet. The Biden inflation that is hurting all of us can be fixed. I understand how government policy affects your daily life. For 36 years as a financial advisor, I've guided Western North Carolina families and business owners and helped recruit companies that brought thousands of jobs to our Western counties. It's time for better representation in Washington. I'm Matthew Burrell, and it's time for you to have a better congressman. Now, during Carolina Furniture Concepts Employee Pricing Event, you pay what we pay, not one penny more. Recliners, $4.99. Sofas, $4.99. Queen beds, $3.99. Queen mattress sets, $3.99. At Carolina Furniture Concepts in Arden and Waynesville. Sale ends soon. With the school board election and superintendent search happening later this year, Asheville City Schools will see a shift in leadership. In tonight's Crisis in the Classroom, News 13's Andrew James talked to the Educators Association about the changes they hope to see. There will be major changes in leadership with an interim superintendent, a permanent superintendent, and eventually elected school board members. The president of the Asheville City Association of Educators tells me this is a pivotal moment for the school system. Last week, Superintendent Dr. Gene Freeman announced he will retire November 30th. Board of Education Chair James Carter says the school system will look outside the district for an interim superintendent. The search for a permanent superintendent will begin once the newly elected board members are sworn in. I talked to the president of the Asheville City Association of Educators about what he would like to see in a new superintendent. Listening to all stakeholders, listening to what parents need, to what students need, to what staff need, and who will work with everyone to make sure that um, basically the, all the needs are met so that we can have the best schools possible. Around the same time Dr. Freeman retires, voters will also pick four elected school board members, a shift from appointed members in the past. The ACAE held a school board candidate forum last week. And the Asheville City Association of Educators has also announced its endorsements for candidates for school board. You can read more about that at WLOS.com. Reporting in Asheville, Andrew James, News 13. The candidates in Asheville's race for mayor are scheduled to debate tonight. Blue Ridge Public Radio and the Smoky Mountain News will air the debate on their social media pages. The forum begins at 7 p.m. Mayor Esther Mannheimer has four challengers in the primary. They include sitting council member Kim Roney, along with Cliff Feingold, Michael Hayes, and Jonathan Wayne Scott. The primary election is May 17th. Athletes competed in the Special Olympics Spring Games today in Henderson County. The games began with a parade, and there were some changes this year because of the pandemic. Instead of being a countywide event, the games were held at individual schools. We were invited to attend the games at Upward Elementary. We were able to get all, like a lot of the community all involved in this, as well as just our few here. We also have parents here, too, and families that are excited to see their athletes um, play in these games and have a lot of fun. The Special Olympics of North Carolina is holding its annual statewide summer games the weekend of June 3rd through the 5th. And now your News 13 Skywatch weather. And what a beautiful day had across the entire region today. Gorgeous with sunshine and uh, some fair weather cumulus clouds now skirting across the sky here too. Hunter Subaru Sky Camp Network in Highlands shows Whiteside Mountain plain in view there. And then off in the distance, a little more haze today. There's a little more moisture hanging in the air. Eventually this is going to be wrung out as rain. It's not going to be widespread. It's not going to soak us for several hours in a row. It's just going to move through and be done, I think, by the afternoon tomorrow in most cases. That's the front though on the map moving our way. It will provide cool air too. Once we see that rain begin tomorrow afternoon and beyond, it'll certainly be a noticeable change. Upper 70s and 80s right now across the region and still plenty of sunshine to be found in the valley with our Hunter Subaru Sky Cam Network. We have mostly cloudy skies at the airport. Just cool down a touch to 77 degrees. South southwesterly wind at 9 and the humidity at 45 percent. Thankfully, not much humidity this time of the year. You can enjoy that warmth without having to sweat it out. All right, temperatures in the mid to upper 50s tonight and we will only go for the upper 60s, I think, in Asheville tomorrow that will fall shy of the average high by several degrees. Big reason for it, the cloud cover, that cool air uh, kind of locked in place with clouds and the chances of rain will be highest in the early part of the day between say about 10 a.m. and 1 or 2 in the afternoon. Then I think we'll drop that chance off pretty quickly into the late afternoon and evening especially. Let's time it out on Futurecast. If you have plans in the morning, looks dry for most of us. If you find rain, you're probably going to have to be west closer to the Tennessee State.
state line. Some spotty showers for that morning drive there, but most of us don't have to deal with it until about 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. Beyond that, it starts to move out, and by 1 or 2, a lot of us are already dry across the mountains. We'll hang on to clouds through the afternoon and then clear out into the evening and be clear into Wednesday with sunshine, but don't be deceived. It's going to be a blustery day with those winds from the northwest, uh, 15 to 30 miles per hour in terms of the wind gust. And you can see that here on this model uh, showing the wind gust picking up tomorrow afternoon with the front approaching. And once it moves through, that wind will stay strong and gusty through the afternoon on Wednesday too. We'll see gusts at least 20 plus miles per hour. When it comes to total rainfall, obviously a lot of it's going to fall to the north and west of us where the Mississippi River Valley could see a couple to several inches of rain over the next five days. This is added up here over the next five days for Asheville. Uh, our shot at rain tomorrow is again just scattered showers in the early part of the day, not looking for rain Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Most of us are dry. If we see anything, it'll be an isolated shower Saturday. Unfortunately, and introducing the chance of rain again with some scattered showers, so it won't cancel any outdoor plans at this point, but certainly watching that for rain. All right, temperatures in the 50s and 60s tonight. The warmer spots will be found outside the mountains again tomorrow. You'll reach the upper 70s. It looks like in Greenville and Spartanburg mid 70s in the foothills, but certainly cooler as you work your way west into the mountains. 60s tomorrow, 60s again Wednesday. Look at the difference though with a nighttime low, only 41 in the morning Wednesday with wind. It'll feel chilly and downright cold and 40 again Thursday morning. Then we go for the 70s to round out the week and the weekend could be a little wet at times with some storms. This year's spring clean coat drive was a huge success and we want to thank everyone for their generosity. Organizers say we collected well over 3,000 coats on Friday. The coats have been given to Evelyn Charities to be distributed next winter. Great job. Two more mountain athletes are continuing their careers at the next level. Coming up in sports, where the stars are going now. You might worry about the health value of the fast food you eat, but what about the wrapper or container it's in? Tonight at 11, scientists track the forever chemicals making their way into our food. Flat Rock Playhouse presents Catch Me If You Can, April 28th through May 14th. Charlotte, a lot of soul is waiting for you. Encore-worthy performers greet you, both ones you've followed for years and others you've just met. And even more magnetic experiences await in this soulful city. Plan a weekend getaway at charlottesgotalot.com. I'm Mark Robinson. Now look, I voted for Pat McCrory in the past, but not this time. Pat's a nice guy, but he's no conservative. Pat put liberals in charge of state textbooks and supported Democrat judges. This time, we don't have to settle. So I'm throwing my weight, and that's a lot of weight, behind the principal conservative choice for U.S. Senate. My friend, Ted Bush. Club for Growth Action is responsible for the content of this ad. The insurance company only knows me by this claim number. Well, insurance company, I'm Max. I was hurt at work weeks ago, and still no word from you about my claim. Nice to meet you. Don't wait on the insurance company. Call Grimes Teich Anderson. When is a window more than a window? A door more than a door. When quality and service come together to turn a renovation into a transformation. Trust America's exterior remodeler. Window World can turn your home into more than you ever imagined. Your pride, your joy, transform your home with Window World. You may or may not know, but right now is the best time to sell your used car. The question is, what are you going to do with that information? Just come see us at Paramount Kia in Asheville and we'll get you an offer on your vehicle today. ParamountKiaAsheville.com when the Obama-Biden administration shut down the government, they forced businesses to close. Bruce O'Connell stood up to fight the massive government overreach and won, opening hundreds of businesses across the country. Now Bruce is fighting to stop the extreme Biden-Pelosi agenda. Bruce will protect small business, cut regulations, and use common sense to solve our nation's problems. Proven fighter, Trump conservative, Bruce O'Connell for Congress. I'm Bruce O'Connell, and I approve this message. Charlotte, a lot of unrivaled experiences show that there's more than meets the eye here. Towering heights, exhilarating speeds, and natural beauty combine to create a lasting impression that is unmistakably Charlotte. Plan a weekend getaway at charlottesgotalot.com. Prestige Subaru, home of the prestige promise on every new, used, and certified Subaru. 
The Sports Desk, sponsored by Prestige Subaru. Most young athletes grow up chasing that D1 scholarship, feeling that it is the only route possible. Well, AC Reynolds tennis single star was one of them, but his attitude changed as he went through high school. Today, Ryland Tootin celebrated the realization of his new dream by signing a scholarship with Guilford College. Tootin was 21 and four as a number one singles over his career and undefeated after his freshman year. He's 53 and eight in all match types. He chose Guilford because not only can he keep playing, he can be happy doing it too. I realized I still wanted to play tennis, but I didn't exactly want that to consume my entire life. So it was kind of a really good balance of, uh, you know, still playing, but still having other parts of your life and just enjoying it, but still the competitive nature of it and all that. Tootin and the Rockets were named the number 10 seed in the 4A dual state playoffs today as well. Their first round matchup at Marvin Ridge is Wednesday. Another college commitment came down on the Twitter verse today. Hendersonville guard Dwight Kennedy announced he is heading to USC Aiken. He averaged 26 points and just under six rebounds per game as a senior. He was also the first Bearcat to earn a spot in the Carolina's classic all-star game. North Carolina will have a strong case for a number one preseason ranking after Caleb Love announced his intentions to return to school. That means four of the five Tar Heels starters will, will be back. Love struggled early in the season but averaged almost 19 points per game in the NCAA tournament to lead Carolina to the Final Four. Different story down Tobacco Road where A.J. Griffin is entering the NBA draft. That makes five Blue Devils exiting Durham. Projected as a potential lottery pick, Griffin averaged nearly 10.5 points per game this year. He joins Paolo Banquero, Mark Williams, Wendell Moore, and Trevor Keels as Duke early entrants. UNC Asheville's Dylan Baycote has been named the Big South Player of the Week after an incredible weekend against Radford. In the three-game series with the Highlanders, he hit 667 with a homer and drove in nine runs. He's the fifth Bulldog to take a conference weekly award this year. They also set a program record with 25 runs in a conference wow. game Saturday against Radford. Wow, 25. 25, 25 yep. That's awesome. Great weather. Yep. Yeah, it looks great here. Sometime. We get some rain in here, too, so that's going to help out. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much for joining us. News 13 on My 40 at 6.30 is next. And join Holly and Ty tonight at 10 11. And these guys too. <laughs>